is my agenda for today. I hope you can all see the screen. Um, I'll start with, uh, with a brief overview of the, uh, of the business case. Um, I'll make this, I hope I make this um, as entertaining as possible and uh, there, there won't be uh, too many numbers. Next is um, the most important part of this presentation. How do we achieve fiber-like rates with VDSL now, today? And uh, as a third topic, um, I'll give a brief outlook um, uh, what's next, and I'll introduce uh, the new L Atlantic uh, Vinex DP solution. First, um, talking about business case, I'll start with a government perspective. Almost all countries in the world have broadband initiatives. Um, governments feel that it is uh, very important for the competitiveness of their economy that uh, the people in their country have sophisticated broadband access. For example, the European Commission um, sets a goal that 50% of all European households should have 100 megabit per second by uh, 2020. Similarly, the US, um, they say that uh, by the end of this decade, 100 million US homes should get uh, at least 100 megabit per second at a decent price point. Uh, in, uh, in China, there's also an initiative that, uh, that sets a target of 50 megabit per second by 2020 in urban cities. And uh, the latest of uh, the broadband initiatives, at least I'm aware of, is in Germany. The new government has set a goal of 50 megabit per second for all German households uh, by 2018. So um, next is the consumer perspective. So um, this is uh, also very interesting. We, all, we, we are all consumers and we rate, relate to this very well. Um, if you live in, if you're lucky enough to live in a, in, in, in a, in a market that is uh, competitive, in competitive broadband markets, um, you'll get a, um, a new, and if you shop for a new broadband connection, uh, you'll find that uh, 100 megabit per second, even today, is available at uh, $30 a month, for example, from uh, your local cable company. This tells you uh, two things. First of all, uh, th this is uh, approximately the price point a consumer is willing to spend for a, a broadband connection. So there isn't something like uh, the $100 or $200 a month uh, fee that you can expect. Second, um, cable companies have the technology available today with DOCSIS that can uh, provide such broadband speeds. And uh, as a matter of fact, the cable company can always match or beat the offering from the DSL um, provider. So now let's come to my next slide and see um, how much fun our network carriers have with uh, this situation. If you look at the business case, I mean, first of all, I need to mention the answer of, 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 the, of, the, of the traditional um, telecom network carriers to this is fiber to the home. Fiber to the home can, uh, of course, from a technology point of view, uh, provide the broadband speeds required this uh, can beat cable, so no problem here. But um, what about the cost? How much does it cost to connect uh, a subscriber? On this chart, I have, um, I, I'll present a case study from, a, from an operator who has connected approximately 400 homes and uh, it displays the price points um, on, this, uh, on a scale. To the left would be cost zero and to the right it's very high it's in the range of several thousands and each line represents one home so what we can see is that the cost to connect one subscriber varies a lot from one home to the other this is very different from uh, deployments of ADSL for example in the past when you have set up a, a DSLAM in a central office and uh, there was absolutely um, no variance. Each, it costs the same to, to connect each subscriber. This is very different here. So there is homes, for example, in greenfield deployments or relatively new houses where you can, can bring the fiber into the home at a decent cost point. But there's also others, older buildings or with annoying tenant associations that will not let you do the work, or give, will not uh, give you permission to drill a hole or dig through a yard. Or there is uh, there's other reasons why, why this just uh, is very, very expensive to bring there. So the average cost to connect the fiber to the home subscriber 
um, is often said to be in the range of two thousand dollars sometimes more some say less but what's what's also what's most important is there's a very high variance in that number now what if what if we had a solution in our hands that uh, could help us bring down the average cost to connect a subscriber and get fiber-like speeds. Telecom operators today, they need an alternative solution to connect those homes that are hard to reach with a fiber. Whenever it is hard to break across the wall with a fiber, it's tedious, long lead times, then for this you need, an, you need a solution to make the fiber to the home business case work. And this is what uh, VDSL with fire from a distribution point, VDSL, FTTDP can bring you. So the solution is fiber like speeds over copper with VDSL. The ITU has um, just released an NXP to its VDSL2 standard that allows network operators to provide enhanced data rates from a distribution point, which is um, typically within 200 meters of the home. So you can provide 300 megabits per second with VDSL2 using Profile 30A from a distribution point. What is this distribution point? It is a little bit an abstract term and it can mean many different things. And this is why I have uh, created the next chart um, that illustrates a little bit what a distribution point can be. A distribution point uh, is basically anything within 200 meters of the customer's premise. So fiber to the distribution point really can mean fiber to the door, fiber to the floor, fiber to the hole, fiber to the pole, and fiber to wherever within 200 meters. So this is uh, what is depicted here on a telephone pole. Uh, you can terminate the fiber here and uh, connect through with the existing copper wires um, to the home or you, have, uh, you terminate the fiber near the door of the building or in a hole in front of the building or in the basement of the building. And in high-rise buildings, of course, if they are vertically connected and the fiber is, can be terminated on the floor and then you, you get behind the, the door of the apartment uh, with the existing copper wires. VDSL FTTDP is really a technology that is... Uh, kind of made for carriers. It is fully standard compliant and uh, it is very, very efficient to install the technology. Why is this so? First of all, why you, why you install uh, your DP box? You can loop through the old connection through that box. So the service interruption is very short. It's in the range of 60 seconds. Next, Advantage is that the DP box doesn't require a power supply at the location where the DP box is located because it is reverse power feeded from the customer's premise. So that gives the carrier flexibility where to install the box. There is no need to ask for permission to get uh, the power, let's say, in the, from the basement of a building or if it's uh, on the door or on a telephone pole, there is usually no power anyway. So this is very convenient, no power supply um, required. Furthermore, the equipment in the customer's home is completely or can be completely self-installed. All you need is a standard compliant CPE and a reverse power feeder that feeds the DP box. This is a very simple uh, device, almost looks like a, a, a normal power supply unit. So that means 300 megabits per second aggregate data rates can be provided today by the use of, um, of uh, standards like GPON and VDSL, nothing proprietary, and uh, this is very attractive for telecom carriers. But, uh, Stefan, uh, here I'm uh, very interested here for our uh, attendees here uh, who are carriers. Uh, it seems that it's not uh, a complex technology uh, and it's compatible with all the standards that uh, they have today. Uh, it's, it's also very high speed. I'm amazed like 300 megabit is uh, exactly what some of the carriers here need to compete against uh, cable. And uh, why is this technology not already uh, 
widely in, in, installed if it's compatible with uh, existing CPE, compatible with existing um, uh, fiber, compatible with existing uh, um, DSL uh, uh, copper uh, deployment. Why isn't it the technology being used by many carriers today? Uh, thanks, Frederick. Very good question. Yes, uh, uh, why, why hasn't it been uh, used much earlier? Um, as a matter of fact, Profile 30A uh, was in the standard already before and it's been there for, for a long time. Um, one of the reasons or the major reason is that uh, in fiber to the cabinet or from a central office, the distance to the premise, the reach is just too long. So it, it doesn't work if you, if you would use it from a, from a cabinet. So you really need to get closer to the customer's home and only with this fiber to the distribution point concepts where you get, where you terminate the fiber within 200 meters of the customer's premise, um, you can really exploit the video cell uh, technology to its full potential and get to the 300 megabit per second aggregate data rate. Yeah, let's get to this. Let's get to our market model. And first of all, also from my side, very consistent feedback from the poll. I mean, this is uh, what we hear often. It's really the broadband speed. And I'm also not surprised that some are uh, saying that low installation costs. So you want it all and you want it cheap. That is the name of the game. Next, uh, we'll get to our... Oops. Here we go. Next is... Uh, uh, it's a little graph that, uh, that shows the market potential of VDSL fiber to the distribution point. So the, the lower bars, the, the dark blue ones, they indicate uh, a VDSL single port market. So, so far we only talk about single port. This is um, uh, confirmed and this is uh, what is the primary interest of uh, network carriers today. So we assume that around 5% up to 30% of all fiber to the home uh, connections or rollouts will be accompanied by uh, VDSL FTTDP. So the assumption is really that uh, carriers, they go out and they, they do the fiber to the home deployment um, as much as they can, but wherever it is tedious too expensive to bring the fiber into the home, the DP box will be installed and the subscriber gets a fiber-like service uh, through its uh, installed copper line telephone cable. So this sums up to um, 2 to 10 million ports lifetime opportunity for uh, VDSL FTTDP, single port only. Later uh, in the time, we'll also see uh, multi-port applications. So this is uh, something under consideration there is carriers interested in this also, but uh, today we're not aware of, um, of really solid uh, deployment plans. And of course, uh, in 2016 and beyond, uh, we'll also see the first uh, use of Fast, which is uh, the next step, the next iteration in FTTDP. So it's really, uh, let's say, an easy upgrade path for, for carriers also if they start with VDSL FTTDP and then uh, move on to Fast. So this will be uh, fully compatible. So now I'll get uh, to my next topic and uh, probably this is uh, what we all have all been waiting for. Um, and we are asking ourselves the question, how can we get fiber like rates with VDSL today? How is this possible now? Atlantic, um, of course, we are a chipset supplier. We provide uh, broadband solutions and uh, uh, we can uh, we look back on a long history uh, of very successful uh, deployments of VDSL and also Chipon, and this is why we have the solutions in our hands that can be used for VDSL FTTDP. First of all, it's our Vinex V3 chipset. It is field proven. It has been in it has been installed in millions of lines everywhere around the world, and it uh, really offers carrier grade IOP interoperability. Um, this is really not a toy. This is uh, a, a proven, a proven product that uh, is uh, very much appreciated by carriers. Next um, is our cheap on product. It is our Falcon chip. It is also field proven in millions of ONTs. Um, it offers the lowest power consumption of any product uh, in this segment, and it is also the most highly integrated cheap um, um, on SOC. 
Lantic also provides a CPE gateway solutions, so carriers always have the option to uh, to get an end-to-end -end solution from us, but it is uh, very important uh, to mention already at this point, this is an option. So anything we do is standard compliance. The standards are in our bloodstream and this, we take this very seriously. And we do not want to force uh, operators to, um, to go for end-to-end. -end. If they do, uh, we have complete uh, gateway IAD solutions, uh, of course, they're ready for use with uh, Profile 30A and uh, it's all state-of-the-art with Wi-Fi AC routers. Our biggest selling point today is definitely our time-to-market advantage. Um, we have uh, presented our first system in 2012 already, and uh, today we are in field trials around the world. Uh, this is a picture from Poland in Warsaw, where um, we are in, in field trials um, at the moment. We are connecting actual paying subscribers um, as we speak. We've started earlier this, this year. These are a fully reverse powered system offering 200 slash 50 megabit per second bandwidth. And uh, it has really been going great. Um, we are very proud and we are um, also thankful to our partner, Aretra, who has uh, made the box and uh, Orange in Poland, who has uh, re made the press release uh, announcing um, this success. Of course, uh, what comes with uh, early time to market and time to market uh, advantage is also the maturity of this product. So it's really ready for volume deployments. This is not some early demonstrator or uh, uh, some concept. This is really hardware that can be used. You can buy it from several OEMs and OEMs. It is in field trials. So it's really, uh, it's really great. So you can really start today. It has a fully verified Chipon DSL GMI VLAN interface. So the, the chain from one chip to the other um, is fully proven and tested. This is one of the big advantages um, using uh, Atlantic technology because everything comes out of one hand and uh, this is really a very tightly integrated solution. Also, um, which is connected to this, uh, we have integrated the DSL device drivers into our Chipon SOC. So um, this makes it also very easy to use this, uh, the solution. Um, we have completed the OMCI DSL management entity. So this is uh, uh, an important step towards ma making uh, VDSL FTTDP ready for the market so that we can add this additional network element without uh, losing the CPE out of sight. And this can be this can be a problem for operators. Of course, we have a working end-to-end -end traffic from the OLT to the CPE. So this um, has all been verified. And since we own all the technologies, it's, uh, this is what we can do in our labs and verify in field trials. Needless to say that we have also passed the EMI and protection tests, also a requirement before you go into the field. And uh, of course, we have been hard at work to, do, to demonstrate that there's really no DSL performance impact from the reverse powering. I mean, this is uh, not what you want. You don't want to, your band to sacrifice bandwidth because you use a reverse power feeder. Lastly, I'd like to mention, and uh, this will be stressed on the next foils, interoperability, IOP, 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 very important. I'll, uh, this is a picture from our labs. Um, interoperability, as you know, some of our competitors, they have a different business model. They leave this uh, to the OEM or the carrier to test interoperability, not so Atlantic. We have invested millions of dollars into laboratories with hundreds and thousands of CPEs, our, um, where we test uh, interoperability against with. So if you look at the, at the system, there's the cheap on OLT, um, on the left side and the gateway platform on the right side with a reverse power feeder and the DP box in the middle with our proven Falcon chip with the, the, the Vinex DFE AFE line driver. And in the middle, there is the copper line where we, um, where we uh, achieve the data rate of 300 megabit per second over profile 30A. So this is all tested in our labs. 
It is not just theoretical, not a concept. It's tested against a thousand CPEs and many, many different OLTs. And this will also be um, shown on the next slide. Our, our Falcon chip, as I said, is field proven, is in millions of ONTs today. It has the BBF 247 uh, certificate from the Broadband Forum. So it is a guaranteed IOP. This is something that you can see on the right side um, against 80% of, of the OLT installed base in, in the world. So this is data from Informatics. And if we look at the certified equipment in the field, we can uh, confirm that this is at least 80%. Of course, we are, we are completely uh, interoperable with any product that has the Broadband Forum certificate. In our laboratory, uh, we have OLTs uh, from Alcatel Lucent, from Dazan, from Ericsson, from Fiber Home, Huawei, NSN, Ocam, CTE, and we are adding to this list um, as we speak. So we really make sure that the uh, Chipon link really works, is interoperable, and uh, um, is uh, suitable for any carrier in any geography in the world. Another word on our um, Falcon chip. This is our Chipon SOC. Um, as I said, it's the most highly integrated Chipon SOC in the market. It is uh, really an amazing product. Um, all you need is a BOSA that you connect to it. Anything else is integrated in the SOC with an integrated laser driver um, that lets us do really a power optical power management in a very, very unique way um, that allows us to consume only one-tenth of the power in uh, optical uh, for the optical transmission when you compare it to the very best of our competitors. So one-tenth of the power consumption. This isn't, of course, not only eco-friendly and saves your, your, your power bill, but this is also very, very important for VDSL, FTTDP, because power is such a critical, um, a critical issue if you uh, use reverse powering. Next slide is about uh, our extremely compact footprint of our Atlantic Vinex solution. So what you can see here, we have compared ourselves uh, with two of our closest competitors in the market and uh, how much space their chipsets uh, consume. And even I haven't put uh, uh, numbers here summing up the, uh, the footprint in total, but what you can see is that the Atlantic chip really has the lowest footprint of all solutions in the market. And this is also very important because it allows you to make small DP boxes. And uh, if you are a carrier, you know how important this is. Sometimes there isn't a lot of space, particularly if you want to connect uh, a lot of subscribers. Uh, in the meantime, before you're jumping into the future and uh, what's going on, uh, uh, one question for you uh, on uh, the uh, uh, from audience. I have several, but at least I will take here uh, uh, one or two. Um, one is about uh, this electricity, as we say, lower power consumption. Uh, at the end, uh, the, you, the consumer may have to pay for this electricity, even if it's only a few watt, as you say. Uh, how do you think it, the, 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 the carrier can convince uh, uh, the consumer to pay for this electricity that he was before paying himself when he was installing this in infrastructure? Do you see that as a problem or is it, uh, is it uh, just a normal thing for consumer to pay for electricity? From uh, the experience uh, from, the, from the cable broadband uh, providers, I'd say it's, it's, not, a, it's not a problem. Um, if, you, uh, if, you, if you get cable broadband and you live in your own house, uh, you need an antenna amplifier installed, uh, for example, in your basement. And uh, this little box consumes uh, at least as much electricity as a DP box. So uh, um, it, at least it doesn't seem to be a problem here. So I'd expect, I don't expect this to be, uh, to, to be this a concern. I mean, it, it, it definitely won't be a, a showstopper. Um, if worse comes worse, uh, the, the telecom operator can pay back the electricity bill because it's really minimal. <laughs> Another question uh, to extend to that, like here we're talking about one box, one user. It's clear that there is, uh, you terminate the fiber and then you, you continue the, with the copper and you serve one consumer. 
I uh, have a question here, and then the, the bill on the on the electricity is simple. When uh, when when box you consume electricity, it's powered by one user. What can we do? A solution where you can have several uh, users connected to the same EF termination. Is this box able to serve several users? And then do you share the electricity between the different users? That's a difficult question. Uh, it is a difficult question. Uh, it is not the first time that's been asked. Uh, we are working on a concept uh, to realize this, to do some uh, smart power sharing um, for multi-port uh, VDSL FTTDP. Um, but this is, um, let's say, in an early concept phase. So to, as of today, uh, you cannot buy this off the shelf in the market. Uh, but please let me know if, uh, uh, if you are interested in this. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to discuss. There are ideas and uh, this problem uh, can definitely be solved. I mean, similarly, what happens if... Uh, if you have an eight port box and, and seven out of, of the eight uh, unplug their, their power feeder, I mean, it's a similar problem, but there's smart solutions for this and uh, we are definitely uh, the right guys to discuss this with. Then let's move to uh, the next subject that is moving forward. Yeah, what is the roadmap, what is the next product? And I understand you're going to explain how we're going to save even more power so all the uh, electricity bill will be even less uh, uh, big by using this new product. So please continue. Uh, yes, exactly. Now I'll get to uh, some very, very fascinating uh, facts that I'd like to present you. Um, what is next and uh, what, uh, what will customers get with our new Lantic Vinex uh, DP solution? We um, are currently introducing um, a new um, Lantic Vinex uh, DP chipset. Um, we have dubbed it DP for FTTDP, as you would have imagined. It is a dedicated uh, DP VDSL solution. It is fully compatible with our current Vinex uh, V3. So uh, this is very important. Uh, when we created this chipset, what we had in mind, we definitely don't want customers to wait for this. They can start with what they have now, so you can buy um, a Vinex V3 based uh, box today and um, our customers, the ODMs and ODMs can simply upgrade uh, the next generation of their DP boxes with our Vinex DP solution. They get all the benefits while they're still completely compatible, pin compatible, software compatible. Vinex uh, DP offers all the same features as Vinex V3 plus you get a 40% power reduction compared to the current generation. So 40% less power. This is really an apples to apples comparison. You uh, consume 40% less in single channel mode. This is quite amazing. This is an amazing achievement of our engineers. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you more on the next slide. Today, Vinex uh, V3 consumes around about 4.4 watts in single channel mode in profile 30A. Um, this enables uh, about an 8 watt uh, VDSL FTTDP box. So this is uh, what, uh, what uh, equipment today in the field uh, consumes. And if you replace the chip with Vinex DP, new chip, new firmware, nothing else, you get down to 2.7 watts in profile 30A. And if you want to operate in profile 17, it goes even down to 2.3 watts. So that enables uh, the equipment makers to make a box that um, uh, consumes 6 watts or less. And this is uh, quite significant because then you get in a whole new class of, uh, of uh, reverse power feeding. You can uh, use cheaper and uh, more efficient power feeders. Um, this is really uh, an amazing achievement and uh, this chip is not something that uh, will happen in the future. Samples will be available uh, in July and uh, you'll see this in the field and we are very happy that, uh, that we can bring this to the market. Now I'll uh, get to um, the most hotly uh, discussed topic. In the beginning in the poll you have mentioned uh, that throughput is uh, really the most pressing issue and most interesting topic so of course i don't want to uh, uh, let you go before you have seen the amazing throughput of our of our solution so to the left in this chart you can see the green line 
it uh, is a upstream transmission and the blue line is downstream. This is in a, in a, in a lab system and it can uh, show you the full potential of our VDSL FTTVP solution. So you can see a hundred, um, a little more than a hundred megabit in upstream direction and almost 240 megabit per second in downstream, um, in downstream direction. This is what is possible with this system. So on the right side, it uh, highlights this. So you can get today in the lab, this is not the future, this is today, up to 340 megabit per second aggregate bandwidth. This is really the potential of the system and it can show you how much headroom there is so that carriers in the end can really advertise the 300 megabit per second service. Today we are providing our customers with an engineering uh, firmware code uh, that enables 200 megabit uh, downstream with retransmission turned on. The retransmission feature today is really essential and uh, this is something that we put a lot of focus on. So this is also available today. Upstream uh, 50 megabit uh, per second in IFAC mode. So this is um, uh, what's been uh, in the standard so far and what, what is uh, being used today. This year in July Together with our new firmware and with our Vinex DP, with uh, the significant power reduction, we'll also re release a new engineering code that enables 200-50 megabit per second um, data rates with retransmission turned on. So both direction, downstream and upstream. So provided you have a CPE um, that, allow, that also uh, it has this feature enabled, of course, Lantic CPEs will have this. Um, you can get 200 slash 50 with um, retransmission enabled. And for the second half of 2014, we have put on our schedule the 200 slash 100 megabit per second data rate with retransmission turned on. And this is really very significant improvement. It is quite amazing that this is possible. Who would have thought a year or two ago that one can do with standards compliant VDSL2? 200 slash 100 uh, megabit per second data rates with retransmission turned on. This is really amazing and we are very proud that, uh, uh, that we have achieved this. Our engineers have been very hard at work to get this done. And uh, I think this is really as good as it gets with VDSL and, uh, and this will be uh, very beneficial to carriers. So beneficial to carriers, uh, that's uh, of course the uh, what we all want to hear is like uh, how is gonna how it, all this will gonna evolve, and uh, of course uh, you're all interested to know where it's going in terms of uh, what's next in in performance and uh, what uh, how we can uh, scale this uh, solution uh, in the future. So the, the the answer I want to bring here is uh, GFast is uh, the next uh, uh, step after. Um, after this uh, VDSL FTTDP, but GFAST is simply already uh, FTTDP. Uh, so you're not, uh, in fact, uh, uh, removing all what was said uh, by uh, Stefan uh, uh, so far. It is simply an evolution. We are working on the GPON side to make this uh, GPON Falcon, for example, uh, GFAST friendly. So this is uh, uh, the first part. FTTDP requires the same as was was presented by um, Stefan up to now, so distances up to 200 meters, the environment is not going to change, but it's still uh, an FTTDP box, a remote power, and, and of course using the copper with certain constraints, the 200 meters to, uh, to connect to CPEs. And of course the CPE, we are also working on that side uh, to integrate with our existing um, CPE uh, SOC uh, the interface to upgrade the speed to gigabit speed uh, from 300 meg as we saw uh, today with VDSL FTTDP to a GFAST FTTDP that will uh, eventually go to a uh, speed of uh, uh, the, the, gigabit, uh, the gigabit range. So this uh, again not uh, things that we are uh, announcing now because the purpose of this uh, webinar was to be on the uh, VDSL FTTDP today, 300 megabit today, evolution can be done now. 
GFAST uh, story is the continuation. It will reinforce the story that we, we made here. It will make it uh, uh, future proof. Like if you go to FTTDP now and you evolve the speed towards, uh, the, towards GFAST, all this architecture that you are implementing, if you select to go FTTDP VDSL, will be still valid. What is also unique on the position here of, uh, of Lanty is that we want to go standards. Standards mean GFAST for us is not a proprietary technology, just like uh, the VDSL FTTDP. We think that interoperability and uh, being uh, compliant with all the other standards uh, that are on the fiber, on the FTTDP, on the VDSL, and here on the GFAST. It's important that we are interoperate with anyone who will be also compliant with standards on GFAST. We've proven that, as Stefan explained to you, on the uh, VDSL FTTDP, we, we selected to protect the investment of here the carriers by complying with standards and we will do the same. Our approach of GFAS is again to go for uh, something that will protect the investment and what we think is the right step now to go towards GFAS is to invest into VDSL FTTDP right now. So that's a, a short here introduction or a short comment about, about GFAS. Uh, then it's probably time to, uh, to conclude now so uh, and see uh, what are the the next step uh, wh how we can continue this conversation uh, with you so first of all good news uh, some uh, some of the very interesting uh, things happening now so then you have here my email uh, frederick uh, tepoatlantic.com and then i can help if you have uh, smart technical question, better send them to uh, Stefan, <laughs> Stefan Hirscher at Atlantic.com. Of course, if you are not going to, uh, to Berlin because you are on the other side of the, of the planet, for example, you can always ask for, I mean, you want to see this technology, it's live, it exists. Uh, we have here in regional offices in, uh, in Asia, in America, in different places of the world, a live demonstration. So please ask for that and uh, make sure uh, you, uh, you have the right contact in Atlantic. Again, if you don't, please use uh, the, the, two, uh, the two email address here followed. Uh, before we conclude, uh, we still have a few, uh, a few answers here, a few questions to, to the questions being asked. Um, of course, this uh, uh, comment I've made on uh, the FTTDP, uh, VDSL, and this evolution to uh, GFAST uh, was a kind of a, a prediction of what the future will be. But how do you see, you, you introduced at the beginning, uh, the market being uh, one market for one, po one point to point uh, FTTDP, VDSL, then multi-point being an additional market, and you answer that. How do you see then the GFAS market and, and the dynamic between the three in the future? Okay, um, this is a very tough question. <laughs> if, we, if, we, if we knew that, uh, probably you can get rich. But uh, my opinion or my, uh, the, our view in, in Atlantic of this is that uh, G.FAST will um, gradually take over the share of the FTTDP market once the technology is ready and once it comes down to a price point that is uh, attractive to most carriers. So until 2016, I do not expect a significant volume in, in, in G.FAST and uh, multiport, I believe, will also um, remain a niche. So single port is really the way to go. Um, this is um, what, what I sense from the market, what carriers most like is really single port because that doesn't have all the question marks that we have in multiport with uh, reverse power feeding, with uh, um, also, um, let's say there's, there's, uh, there's, there's not this, uh, you, you can upgrade it gradually, let's put it that way. So as, as a subscriber subscribes to the service, you can uh, install a single port system. So this is uh, very attractive to carriers because in the past they have installed this uh, big MDUs and 
and maybe in this home only one one uh, subscriber has really subscribed to the service so single port is really most attractive today this might change i think by 2016 uh, the world will look different than today so um, um, by then uh, probably that will, will look more colorful today it's single port yeah also uh, uh, if i could comment here on the the carriers i know uh, even if uh, vdsl has been available for years and years they are still uh, carriers uh, worldwide and deploying uh, ADSL uh, CPEs still because the cost is I mean uh, is still an issue you're not offering uh, even uh, vectoring uh, VDSL to everybody here in, in the world there are still uh, uh, people buying uh, CPE or with ADSL so the market is not one product it is a, a variety of offer that carriers can do that the vendors can do and ADSL is still uh, something uh, uh, it, I think it is only from this year that the number of CPE being, C, being VDSL uh, and capable will exceed the number of ADSL CPE uh, on the market. It's only from this year. So the, the, way, the day that the, G, the GFAST uh, CPE will exceed the VDSL CPE, I think there is still some time. Uh, of course, we expect uh, the, the market to move, uh, but uh, there will be uh, uh, eventually less, less, less ADSL, much more uh, VDSL CPE, for example, and it will start with some uh, some uh, G, uh, GFAST uh, CPE. So there is uh, here again richness in, into the offer, and we are planning to uh, uh, to offer uh, the, the, those different solutions for the carriers. Uh, I think uh, there are a few other uh, questions that are technical or uh, eventually uh, that we can answer uh, face to face or, or uh, by, by email. Uh, once again, I think it's, it may be time now to, uh, to conclude. If you are interested in the uh, presentation itself, uh, the slides will be made available. So, uh, Stefan, uh, you can confirm that? Uh, yes, they will be available on the website. Okay. And, uh, of course, there is here, uh, uh, and you can see that here on, uh, on, uh, on this slide, you have uh, the special link on FTTDP, so a special advertised page on Atlantic website. You have even a video. <coughs> Uh, if you're on YouTube, great. Uh, so if you have uh, uh, something interesting to look on television uh, and you have a YouTube uh, compatible TV, no problem. There is the Atlantic channel, some nice videos also to, uh, to look for. Also on our website, there's also embedded website. videos. And once again, the conclusion here uh, about our Atlantic FTTDP, we are the first to market VDSL FTTDP. We are a leader in the both side, the, the connectivity on the CO side and the CPE uh, socks. So we have the, the whole full uh, solution here for this uh, VDSL FTTDP. And we are standards compliant. We believe that IOP is extremely important for the carriers. This solution is totally true IOP uh, here, VDSL FTTDP. So if you have those uh, three elements or three bullet points uh, uh, that you have uh, understood from this presentation, we are very happy. Thanks, Stefan, uh, for this excellent presentation. Thank you, and, Frederick. And to all our attendees, uh, thank you for participating. Uh, stay tuned and uh, we will organize, of course, further webinar uh, like this in the future. Bye now. Bye now. Thanks and uh, get in touch.